Hey guys, it's been a while. How are you guys doing? Doing fine, thanks. Yeah. How are you? Awesome, thanks for asking. Everything is good. And, uh, you know, let's start with the show that you guys played, you know, like a week ago. How did the show go for you guys? Oh, awesome, it was great. Yeah. yeah. Sold out. Always, and... always good to be. Excitement. It's always good to be able to, to you know, do, warm up back home, uh, have uh, some intimate shows. With, it's a small venue, so we get the audience really close and test out new things for the set list. And uh, oh, it was a great mood, packed house, and yeah. Very nice. Cool. And uh, Roy. Well, really it's stoked, you know, to get this this last part of the tour down, you know, eventually, finally. Because <laughs> we've been waiting so long now with the pandemic and, and you know, everything been postponed for like three years. And this should have taken place three years ago. So it's really good to, to you know, get going. Yeah. And, uh, you know, State of Deception was released, you know, during the pandemic or just when everything started to close down. Uh, was it frustrating for you guys to have an album out? You guys had the tour prepared and all of a sudden nothing happened. Uh, tour, you can start probably. Okay. Yeah, no, obviously that was very disappointing um, in so many ways. Um, and, uh, well, we had no idea that the album title would fit the time so well. Yeah. <laughs> we really say to deception. <laughs> so, but, well, uh, of course, obviously, we have prepared this for a long time, this release, and it happened to be in April when the pandemic had just broken out. And um, so both in terms of promoting this album, uh, it was a disappointment that uh, we, we couldn't promote it the way we wanted. And of course, the, we were so psyched to get out on tour, meet the fans, and uh, well, that's what's going to happen now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like you said, the 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 the, the timing was was perfect, you know, in in both good ways and bad ways. Like the 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 work situation was perfect for the themes of the album and the title, and 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 and. The timing was the worst, you know, considering the fact that we've been working so long and so hard to get this thing out there. And and then when we finally release it, it the pandemic hits the world and everything shuts down. But, you know, we're here. We're still happy. We're, we're you know, live and kicking. So that, that's a good thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, let's go to the because you guys were on the hiatus for a for a while. And uh, when you guys returned, um, what was was there any concerns like? The fans will still remember us. <laughs> Do they know who we are? Right, because mainly you, because you were with Camelot, you left after the burned out and, uh, you know, you were away from the music for, you know, for a while. You returned. Was there any concerns for you? You know, do the fans still remember me? Do they like me still? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a totally appropriate question. Uh, 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 and And... We didn't know for sure. Obviously, we knew there was some demand out there because a lot of people have been, you know, uh, posting stuff on, on, you know, on U YouTube uh, clips, and and we we knew there were a few out there that, that were still waiting and hoping, but we had no idea how many uh, and if there was a um, reasonable foundation for us to you know go out there and do this the way we wanted to do it. But uh, we. Uh, got this crowdfunding campaign going back in uh, 2018 and the immediate response was overwhelming so we immediately felt that that you know this was something that people had been waiting for and we felt really really uh, uh warmly welcomed so so it was uh, it didn't take too long before we understood that this was gonna you know be a good thing and uh, Tor, how did it feel to you know reunite again with old bandmates <laughs> Uh, it, it was such a great pleasure. And, you know, we, we were friends all the time, so we saw each other on and off uh, during this long break. But, uh, but of course, to, to make music together again was, was incredible. And, uh, and it was also so nice to see as soon as we really started to get together again, we were, we were on the same flow as, as back in the 90s. Like, because we didn't really have to rehearse a lot to to find each other again uh, instant click again so now that, that was beautiful 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously when you guys reunited, State of Deception, the album came out. How was the songwriting? Was it, you know, as smooth as back in the day? Did you guys knew uh, exactly where you wanted to go musically? Well, if anything, it was was smoother and easier than, than ever. Uh, we, we didn't really know where we were going. I think that's, that's uh, something that... Um, uh, You know, we, we, we re, when we approach the, the songwriting process, you know, in the beginning, we we that that's part of the experience, like not really knowing where the songs and the ideas are going to take us. At least on my part, I think also that was touring. But uh, yeah. yeah, so so that that's that, that's part of the excitement. Uh, but you know, along the way, you you see little pieces here and there, and you start to see the the you know the 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 framework framework you know of what this could be you know and then you start developing uh the 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 the, the parts that you know um that pop out as as uh um you know uh, parts that that need to be worked on and that that is feel inspiring in the moment and and then the when the ball starts rolling you know it's kind of a uh it's kind of um automatic process in a way but it's a lot of hard work but it's it's that's a really fun part of doing this business in my estimate i think we're like so sometimes it just feel like a medium um uh, like the music just flows through um and like roy says of course this also really comes from within so so, so it's a strange process or oh, dig as deep within as possible and reach as far out as possible uh and, and make this match somehow <laughs> And um, and it's always been so important for us to to write from the heart. Uh, so we never sit down and uh, let's write a song like this or a song like that. We we just go with the flow. And uh, and I totally agree with Roy. It's it's been easier than ever to 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 write now. Yeah, and it, it is very fast. It's, it's still a very fascinating process, though. Like when you get, when you start, you know that there's like. Pretty much nothing and you know that like, like uh, a year from now there's going to be something hopefully a full album and, and that whole idea of having nothing and knowing there's going to be something in the end is, is still very fascinating yeah you know speaking of flow flow was you know the last studio album that you guys did you know uh, as conception before you <laughs> reuniting uh it, it was like a a bit of a part from what you guys were doing with the previous three records. Uh, when you guys were writing for State of Deception, do you guys look at flow? Like, okay, where, where, where were we last time we wrote as a band? Did, that, um, did you guys look at what you did in the past and see, you know, what can you do from now on? Not really. Um, and it's always been in our DNA somehow to, to constantly evolve. Um, for us, it's also like a musical journey we're on. So, 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 so we kind of are curious about what's ahead and, and uh, very into the now, but not so much looking back, really. Um, and I think because all the albums, they're, they're really good documents uh, about where we are uh, as individuals and a band uh, at each time uh, we did the record. I think that in itself is the thread throughout uh, our catalog. If anything, I would say that we, we, you know, to the extent that we actually do look back, it, it is to avoid repeating ourselves. Like if we do something that we feel is like too similar to, to, to certain ideas or songs that we had in the past, we, we might skip it just because ah we've we've done that you know we want to try something different so so but um yeah no we try to look ahead yeah and uh, Roy lyrically what was the approach for State of Deception it seems to be like a darker album you know in a way than uh, you know previous records at least mm -hmm. the, the vibe is a bit that I'm not saying that in a negative way by <laughs> any means but uh, there seems to be a more heavier vibe. On the on the state of deception, um, what was you know the the process with the writing lyrics, the approach that you took for a state of deception? Were you like in deceptive of the world, so to say? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, the, 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 you know, the, there's been quite a bit of stuff going on in the world and around us, uh, uh, and also in our personal lives. You know, uh, from from the last time we were together. 
uh, that that necessarily have to color, you know, both music and lyrics. Uh, but you know, also the the the, the world situation is is quite dramatic, and 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 it's been just you know uh, uh, evolving. Uh, that that negative trend, so to speak, has been evolving rapidly even since we released State of Deception. But uh, you know, I, I write lyrics um, pretty much the same way we do music. I, I uh, to be concrete, I, I jam over you know the music. The music almost always comes first. And then I jam some lines over that. And uh, it could be, uh, uh, it's not really English, but certain words come out <laughs> as English for English sounding. And then I, you know, somehow little parts here and there make sense right so i take those out and, and i try to evolve those those sentences and of course you know the the surroundings and whatever my mind is occupied with at, at the moment will color you know uh, uh the direction but it is really the same as with the music that that the lyrics kind of write themselves uh at least up to a certain point you know towards the end you have to you have to you have to like you know tie everything together and make things make sense in, in, in a different way but uh it is uh similarly fascinating process yeah and i should think we were both on lyrics and music we, we probably spend like 95 percent of the work is for the last five percent to <laughs> to complete <laughs> yeah. yeah that's cool and uh, you know obviously you know after sit of deception you guys re-released the back uh, the the older records uh on vinyl which you know, I got them all here. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I had the CDs as well anyway. But uh, how was how was for you for you guys to have these records? I think it was the first time that were on vinyl, available on vinyl. How, how was for you guys to, because, you know, it, it's weird how, you know, vinyl just became trendy again <laughs> and the cool thing to have. But how was for you guys to, to have the, the albums released on vinyl? Oh, it's great. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and finally have those babies released again also. I mean, we, we put so much heart and effort into all of these albums and uh, and that it now that BMG and Noise now like, you know, shed some, some light to them again and repackaged them. There's also some old bonus demos that was also great fun to go through all the old material and, and listen through things we didn't release before as part of these albums. So no, it's a great feeling. Yeah. And it's so great to see. I really, really, I'm really so happy for, for kids growing up today, you know, appreciating the, 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 the uh, cool thing of like buying uh, an album, a, a vinyl album and opening it. Because, you know, that's, that's, that's what we grew up with. And I just remember, um, you know, unpacking a vinyl LP, you know, back in the day. That was, that was. It wasn't. It never was the same, really, with the CD. So I'm so glad that that's that's come back, and and uh, very happy for for you know kids growing up these days, uh, uh, rediscovering the the vinyl. Yeah, you know, one of the cool things about vinyl, it makes you work out at least twice to change sides every twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> And we see, the, you know, with the CD, you just stay there on the couch, listen to the whole thing or in bed. Yeah. But with the vinyl, you have to get up, you know, and change sides to listen to it. And, yeah. you know, I had parallel minds here because I think it was the breakthrough record for you guys, special with the Roll the Fire video. You know, I remember watching it for the first time. I think it was on Viva, that German t uh, TV they had like a like a metal show back then and i remember watching the the video um was that the breakthrough moment for conception somehow because i felt that after the video was released and the album that um there was a lot of talk about conception i think you're definitely right we we had done a little bit like maybe our breakthrough in norway was with the last sunset uh, and we had a little, you know, underground distribution uh, through a German sub label kind of thing and some distribution in Japan. But it was first with Parallel Minds that we had like an international record company in our back. And uh, yeah, it, it was a big climb for us. Yeah, and Roll the Fire on the video, you know, being on MTV, Headbangers Ball and Viva, and, and it definitely, definitely spread. Uh, 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 
the 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 were you know that there was a Norwegian band coming out with some 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 cool stuff. Yeah. How did you guys felt when you know saw the video for the first time on MTV and Viv and all that? Was it like we made it? We made it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, back back in the day, you know, that was when MTV, like like back then, MTV was still, you know, the 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 shit, and uh, yeah, that was a big big achievement, definitely. Very proud. I was so proud. That's what we do with the MTV logo <laughs> <laughs> up in the corner. That's cool, and uh, you know, obviously, you guys had to remake "Roll the Fire," you know. So to say, you guys, we recorded Roll the Fire again and Silent Crying. You know, why those two songs specifically to, you know, recreate for a 2.0 version? Um, as far as hits go, you know, the, the, I would say that Roll the Fire and Silent Crying are the, the closest we've been to. Like, the, the, those two songs have reached out to a lot of people. They've touched a lot of people in, in different ways, obviously been having so different characteristics one being a, a, a really uh tender and melancholy ballad and, and roll the fire being a uh more up tempo and really powerful heavy dark song uh but you know those two songs did quite a bit for us back then and, and uh it just felt like uh, a good idea to 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 uh, uh dress them up in today's uh sound and and, and you know have new listeners hear them with today's technology behind it. Yeah, and exactly that dress them up to today's sound. It feels like we also have another way of expressing ourselves when we perform now than we had in the 90s. So, so there were also songs that felt like we can give them uh, a little different approach, which, uh, which I think came out really nice. Yeah. Did you feel like when you were playing like the older songs now that um, you feel the need, not the need maybe, but you feel like you like to change little bits to give a more modern touch, so to say, like to give a Conception 2.0 <laughs> as well uh, side to it, uh, not just those two, but you feel like in certain other songs that you you know, you you would like to change things a little bit, not the whole song, obviously, but just little bits. I, th I think sometimes it could have been nice to give them a little more production, maybe uh, a little more detail. But but then again, when we play played old songs, they also feel very nice the way they are. Um, maybe it's a project for later. Who knows? To to maybe like give them a new dress, but but they also feel very nice the the, the way we. We played them pretty much like like we did back in the 90s. There are certain songs though that we do differently, quite differently actually. And and but, but we we do that more to to for, for the for our own uh, uh, satisfaction. Really, we just want to you know do the songs differently, uh, uh, present them in a different manner, not to make them more modern, just just to you know do them differently. I think it's more it's more in our approach to them in our performance yeah. yeah did you feel like when you you when you played the songs when you played the the songs live and depending on the crowd reaction that you might you know change you feel the need to change not the need again but but when you see the crowd reacting you feel like uh you know okay this works like this you know <laughs> Well, the cool thing is, you know, the the, the we, we've been playing uh, a few gigs now since we got back together, and uh, and uh, we pretty much know which songs work and 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 not. I mean, most of the songs work, but you know, certain songs work better than others. So, obviously, we we adjust the set, you know, uh, to to a certain extent. But I mean, it, it is pretty much about setting up a set that that we're happy with, and and unless people like, you know, really don't like it. Uh, or uh, unless they, you know, <laughs> boo us off stage, which <laughs> have not happened yet, you know. <laughs> Luckily, that didn't happen yet. <laughs> I know. No, no, no. But, but I think our biggest problem is that we have too many songs we want to have on the set yeah. list, but uh, we, we can't we can't play, you know, for hours and hours and hours and hours. So, so it's more like, okay, we, we, we want to, of course, obviously, now, now we're also out to promote the state of deception. Um, so, but... 
uh, we want to feature a lot of new material. We also want to feature some of the good songs we like the best from 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 the old material. I think like the the fan reaction is the same. I, I don't really feel a difference between old and new material. I, I think the the tension and the the atmosphere and excitement uh, in the room is the same, both old and new. The fans are excited to have you guys back. <laughs> And we are excited to see them again. <laughs> and we're excited to be back together and, you know, yeah. eventually be, be able to, to you know, uh, remember it back in the, the, the day, the, 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 the way this, this ended, the way we, the reason why we put things on ice was this big tour that we were supposed to go out on. So it, it feels really good to, you know, come out now and, and play both old songs and, and obviously the new songs that yeah. we've been making. Yeah. And uh, there's, you... something about, there's something about this, sorry, something about this, this energy that happens also between us on stage and between us and the audience that is like indescribable. Uh, and uh, not having been on stage for, for many years, it has been such a blast to rediscover this magic and, and really be able to live it. And now that you guys are more experienced, you know, you have all a family, so you won't be away. You won't be doing like probably six months tour in a row anymore. I mean, it's crazy. Anyway, just to imagine being away from home for that long these days. But, um, you know, how do you going to approach touring from now on? Uh, obviously, this, this run... You know, there's a few countries you guys are going to play. What are the plans after you, you complete this tour that ends in Lisbon? What are the plans for future touring? You're just going to tour like, uh, you know, areas in Europe, um, for, you know, let's say like two weeks, three weeks, go back home, then do three weeks here and there again. What's the approach you guys are going to take for touring moving forward? Well, I think uh, the way we are doing it now suits us very fine that we do uh, one-off shows or two shows or three shows in a row. Um, and for now, it's important to do, to complete the, the all the shows that's been postponed since the pandemic, and then then just move ahead and uh, and take things in our own pace. That's always been very important. That's also why we self-release and, and uh, to be able to control ourselves to to do it in a tempo that that suits all of us. Yeah, right now we're focusing on this tour and, and uh, you got to remember that, you know, this this tour should have happened three years ago and, and you know, the, the all the shit that hit the fan the last last, you know, couple of years has as um, it, it has changed, uh, it, it has changed people's mind, and and, and you know the whole uh, the whole process of planning ahead, as, as, really as far as touring goes, uh, has been a little bit difficult to put, to be put it mildly last year. So so uh, you know we, we want to do this tour, and then we need to do a evaluation after the tour, and then we see what happens. But you know, luckily it seems like things are getting back to normal as far as you know. Um, uh, uh, live goes so I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping that that things stay the way they are and that you know the war ends soon and that we don't see another uh, wave of, of COVID you know appearing yeah you know I'm <laughs> I just want things to get back to normal so I yeah. <laughs> you know it's so depressing looking at news these days anyway and uh, have you guys Considering new music because State of Deception was released three years ago, uh, are you guys working on ideas or you just prefer to focus on these shows and then you see what happens? We're always one, yep. yeah, we're always one one step at a time. So the so main focus is now touring, uh, but we have also started to look into uh, to new songwriting. But I think we will we'll go go more intense into that later at later stage. Cool. And, uh, you know, I see a lot of guitars behind you. Do you have a favorite when you're writing a <laughs> tour? Oh, no. Well, yeah. Oh, bit more of them. They're, they're, they're different. They, they give different flavors. Um, and it, it's like what we talked about, that being in the moment. Um, obviously, this, this, this little friend has become like a live favorite to play. Yeah. ES-335. 
Uh, well, so soloing, um, maybe Strat is cooler, or you can do a little bit more when recording or a Telecaster. It's really different from different atmospheres. Cool. And Roy, obviously, you know, we talked that when you had a burnout, you know, you disappeared for quite a while. Everybody was thinking like, is he going to sing live again? Is he going to do anything? How was for you, you know, as a singer? Because you need to, like, the voice, you need to practice, otherwise you lose the ability as well. <laughs> you know, just like, it's a learning thing as well. How was, you know, did you kept singing even though you weren't in a band or anything? Do you still did all of that to keep the voice? Or you were just like thinking, you know, maybe it's over for me? No, I didn't think it was over. I just I just really did not feel like having anything to do with music or the industry for, for the you know first couple of years at least. But I've been doing some singing in different churches and, and you know, different, different, you know, uh, 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 yeah, on a, on a few occasions I've been I've been singing and had to prepare for that. But I haven't been I didn't really sing a whole lot the first like four or five years. Uh, but then you know, uh, Tor came up to me with with his um, first ideas for for a potential conception reunion or, or getting back together. And uh, from then on, I really had to like you know uh, go in and practice and see if I still had it. <laughs> Luckily, it was all a matter of. <laughs> Yes, no problem. <laughs> Hopefully, that's how other people see it too. Yeah, no, I think from the record, you know, I was, you know, a fan of Conception before you joined Camelot, anyway, and uh, yeah. you know, I think the voice is still there. So you know, Excellent. you know, that's a great thing, you know, for us that you know like Conception and like to hear you as well you know i think you haven't lost fortunately and you're back and we're happy <laughs> so, okay. appreciate hearing that thank you so uh before we go um you guys are going to finish this tour in lisbon at the end of april uh for those who haven't checked youtube and haven't seen anything from conception live because there are fans actually that prefer not to see anything and be surprised when they see the band what can they expect from the conception live show a magical uh unity of you know four people plus we have a couple of other you know musicians with us uh there's something magic there's always been something magical about this band and 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 that has to do with it's really all luck that we, the four of us met and, and we have personalities and, and we represent, you know, um, uh, musically, uh, um, we just complement each other in, in a very nice way. It's, it's not really explainable. It just, it just clicks. And uh, I think that is very hearable uh, when we play live. And it's the kind of thing you have to, be there for it to experience so i really hope that a lot of people come out and and check us out when we play in in, in lisbon uh, on this tour yeah yeah no and there's always this special feeling and, and it's also with the fans and we have a way to connect the they have a good way to connect with us that is so magical and uh, so it will be an intense but dynamic show with some surprises also oh yeah mm -hmm. Always looking forward for surprises. <laughs> <laughs> guys, thank you very much for your time. You know, look forward to seeing Lisbon. Look forward for you guys to sign all the vinyl that I have. Anyway, I got Yeah, them. look forward to see you there. I got them yeah. all here, you know. <laughs> I, yeah. I keep them in the plastic. I don't know. I have this thing. I open... I just opened the sides to, to get, but I keep the plastic <laughs> yeah. on. <laughs> You're a real collector. Yeah, I have a thing for stickers. I don't like to throw them out. It's ridiculous. Uh, I don't know uh, why I... I <laughs> also do the same. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thank you very much for your time. Looking forward, really looking forward to see you guys at the end of April here in Lisbon. You know, it's going to be my first time seeing Conception. So uh, hopefully it won't be the last. Right. <laughs> oh, <hopefully. laughs> just the beginning. Just the beginning. That's the <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great day, and uh, hope to see you guys soon. All right. Yeah, really looking forward to seeing you. Pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.